Hello everybody, my name is Wilder, and Pioneers of Olive Town has been out for a while now. I've been covering the game and all of its updates since its announcement, and it's been really exciting to follow it. Now that I've had a good amount of time to both stream it here on my channel and play it in my free time, I wanted to talk about it a bit, because I think that Olive Town is actually a pretty fun game. I've been having a ton of fun with it, and I think it has a lot of enjoyable mechanics and elements to it. However, I also think it has probably just as many problems and just kind of confusing oversights with its gameplay. It's definitely been a back and forth for the community, and in fact, there's been an update that was announced that's coming in the future, and it's actually going to address a few of these concerns that a lot of people have. However, we'll get to that in a bit. For now, let's start at the beginning. Story of Seasons Pioneers of Olive Town released in North America for the Nintendo Switch on March 23rd, 2021. This is the newest entry in the Story of Seasons series, and this time around we once again inherit a farm from our grandfather. However, the farm is extremely run down and is mostly forest. There isn't even a house for you to live in. So it's up to you to make the best of it and turn the overgrown forest into a farm you can be proud of. So, the way this whole farm restoration thing works, or pioneering, if you will, is there's a bunch of resources you collect from everything on your farm. You chop trees, you get wood. You break rocks, you get stone. And you can use all those materials to restore and fix broken buildings, such as the chicken coop, the barn, and the horse stable that are lying destroyed on the farm. There's actually quite a lot of restoring and building you can do in this game, and it always keeps you busy. From unlocking other areas of your farm, to just restoring like a little beehive to make some honey. There's a huge checklist of things to keep track of and fix up. Which means there's also a ton of different materials, and it isn't limited to just wood and stone. There's different ores, types of wood, there's clay, grass, thread, different gems. And all of these materials can be put into makers to process them into even more materials. You know, ores become ingots, wood becomes lumber, clay bricks, grass, thread, thread, cloth, and how much of these materials you're going to need depends on what you're building or restoring. This maker and material system is going to be the main gameplay loop for Olive Town, more so than your animals, I would say. You have so much to build that these makers are going to be working pretty much 24-7, especially when you get into the late game and you've got tasks piling up. So, I actually like when tasks pile up. I love having that long to-do list in the game because it always keeps me busy and I always have a goal. It's really nice because a huge problem with a lot of these farming sims is that once you get like a year in, you completely run out of stuff to do. So the fact that all of town always keeps you busy and for so long too is really great. With how much stuff is thrown at you at once though, I can see how it could be a little overwhelming for some people. But if you try your best to keep up with it all and plan it out, you'll be fine. It's actually a lot of fun. Keeping on top of it though, that's a different story. See, the makers in this game have been a very popular talking point. Enough people were actually upset about it that this is one of the mechanics that are going to be changed in some way in the future update. So these makers can only hold one item at a time, and will only give you one item at a time. You can't stack materials into them and forget about it all day, then come back and have like six pieces of lumber ready for you at the end of the day. You're only allowed to put one item in. The problem appears when you find out that it takes a few hours in-game to actually process your materials in them. The amount of time depends on the quality of the wood and ore, so you can't put it in, wait a few seconds, then repeat. You actually have to leave and do something else. So the strat here right now is to build multiple of these makers and have them all work at the same time. You're allowed to have 20 of each maker on your farm at a time, and this is what most people have been doing, is putting down a ton of makers of every kind in order to actually get all the materials you need. They take up a lot of room after a while though, and eventually there's going to be an entire area of your farm dedicated to these things. Again, especially late game. Anyway, the big thing that I take away from the whole maker situation is that it's horribly inconvenient, but not in a way that rewards you for working with or through the inconvenience, you know? Like the way it's designed doesn't feel as though it's there to make sure I work for the things I'm building and creating. It just turns into a waiting game, really, where a lot of my days were just spent waiting for makers to finish. Like I said earlier though, there is a patch coming out that will address this issue. I'm glad that they're looking to fix up this system a bit because the processing of materials isn't inherently a bad concept at all. It's just the way it was done in this game doesn't flow well with the rest of the mechanics that revolve around the makers. Anyway, I mentioned skills a bit ago, let's talk about that. You have 12 skills in this game. Skills like logging, mining, communication, cooking, fishing, and as you use these skills and do these things, you get experience towards the skills and can level them up. When you do level up, you get certain perks for different levels. You know, like as you level up mining, you'll get perks that make mining take less stamina and allow you to find extra materials while mining. This mechanic really reminds me of Rune Factory, like a lot. And I think it's really cool and fun. It adds a nice bit to the grind of a farming sim, and I think it fits here well, especially because you're always going to be getting experience every day for these skills anyway, so why not get rewarded for it too? 
why not get cool perks for it? I think it's nice, and I would love to see this mechanic come back in the future. My favorite, though, is the communication skill. I just think it's funny that you have a bunch of farming skills, and the last one is just, like, communication. It makes sense, though, especially with, in my opinion, one of the most important features of these games being friendships, relationships, and romances. We have a pretty big cast in this game, and we also have 10 marriage candidates. But one thing that I'm so glad to have is a ton of events and cutscenes. There are quite a lot in this game, from hard events to regular events with the townsfolk. It's actually great. And a lot of these events are really good, I would say. There were a few that were pretty funny, it actually made me laugh, and I enjoyed them quite a lot overall. I'd say they're pretty good. It's the actual hard events that I kind of have a problem with. The hard events are fine, but a lot of the time they didn't really go anywhere, and there were never those deep emotional conversations that really let you understand and relate to the characters and their struggles. And on top of that, I found that quite a few of these hard events kind of just ended like really abruptly. I don't know if that was just me. Like I felt like I was in the middle of a conversation and then there was a loading screen and I was just back at my home. It was a little jarring, but like I said, overall the hard events themselves were fine. I just definitely kind of expected more, if I'm being honest. Speaking of expecting more though, the conversations and dialogue outside of events has also been a huge talking point for this game. Unfortunately, as you go through the friendships, relationships, the ranks with characters, their dialogue barely changes. It really doesn't, like, it really doesn't budge. You can go through an important scene for a character, learn something new about them, become better friends, but their dialogue just doesn't change. It's actually pretty jarring, like, it takes you out of the game. I've seen people call these characters cardboard cutouts, and I was like, well, I don't know if I go that far. But, uh, then I got married. And one of the first things that my wife said to me was the dialogue she gave me on the second day I ever talked to her in the game. And I just, I, I guess I just don't understand why this was done. It's just very confusing to me that you can get married in the game and have none of the dialogue change. The decision is just confusing to me. I, it was definitely a shame. I just expected more from that area, you know? However, in the upcoming patch for this game, the dialogue will be addressed as well. They'll be adding more dialogue and adjusting existing dialogue. See, this is the whole thing about Olive Town for me, right? It's a theme where, for a lot of the fun and cool mechanics, I usually find something bad or kind of weird and confusing about them. It's not usually enough to ruin anything, but it's a back and forth that just makes me question a lot of the decisions. Because of these patches that are coming in though, it looks like they're going to keep updating this game along with the expansion pass they're working on. I guess what I'm saying is, there's definitely going to be a benefit to waiting to get this game, if you're still on the fence about it, you know? Anyway, let's go through a bunch of great things about this game though. Starting with the character designs. The character designs, in my opinion, are actually great. I like them a lot. I think there's a lot of memorable designs here. Your animals on your farm aren't bought in this game. You actually find them wandering around in the wilderness on your farm, and you tame them to put them in either the barn, chicken coop, or stable. Speaking of animals though, the mounts in this game. Well, first of all, you can ride a wolf, which is just the coolest thing ever. But also, your farm has three sections, and while it's not as big as I thought it was going to be, it's still a pretty nice size, and it's actually big enough for your mounts to make a pretty big difference, especially if you've set up your farm to make use of all three areas every day. Also, having those three areas is great, because of the farm customization and all the furniture you can craft and place down. You can make a ton of stuff, from benches to scarecrows, fences, statues, street lamps, and the best part is, you can tie it all together using pathways you can lay down. I loved customizing my farm in this game, and it actually ended up being one of my favorite things to do. There was so much to make and so much space to work with, it was really enjoyable. You can also customize your house, kind of, I guess. They give you a very small space in your house to customize that gets bigger as you upgrade your house, but it's still basically just a corner the entire time. It's a shame that there isn't more freedom there, because customizing your farm is so fun and free that I would have loved to see something like an Animal Crossing house customization system. I don't know, I think the freedom inside your house would have went really well with the rest of the farm. Anyway, next, the museum. While the museum isn't the coolest or most engaging thing in the world, it was still pretty cool to be able to collect different things and donate them and have them displayed in the museum itself. It fit well, and I hope they actually continue to use the idea and build on it in the future, because it could actually become pretty great. Next though, tools. Upgrading your tools is instant, which is great. When you collect materials and do farm work in general, these little egg-looking sprites can pop out, and by collecting a bunch of them, you can trade them in to increase stuff like your stamina or even the quality of your soil on your farm. I think it's great, because it's another system that rewards you for playing the game like you already would. So it feels nice without being broken to the point of like, oh, I get upgrades every day because of it. In my opinion, Pioneers of Olive Town is actually a really pretty fun game. 
but it does have quite a few problems that are unfortunately tied to some of the core mechanics of it. With the updates coming in the future, and with it looking like the devs know how and what to tackle, hopefully, I definitely think this game is going to come out on the other side pretty alright. Yeah, that doesn't excuse the launch state, but I'm still optimistic because I do think there's a genuinely great game here. It's just being held back quite a lot by its own mechanics. If you're someone who can look past a lot of these big issues, then you're gonna love this game, and love it even more as the updates roll out. But if you're on the fence and you've been kind of worried about all the criticisms you've been hearing, then definitely wait for this game, and keep up with the updates and patches that are being released, and what they're bringing to the game. Definitely keep an eye out for this game later on. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Anyway, let me know what you loved about All of Town, and let me know your overall thoughts as well, because that's going to be it from me today. Don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed this video. All links are down in the description along with the names of my wonderful, amazing patrons. Thank you all so much for watching, and as always, I will see you in the next one.